Hi, everyone. It's your boy, Zach. Wow, I actually sound <laughs> better than I thought I did. I think this is the first video I've recorded since I had my sinus surgery, which was really three surgeries at once. It was three different procedures, just all under uh, anesthesia. And um, uh, recovery is a lot better than I, I thought I was just going to be down for the count for like two weeks. Like I can't go to the gym or do yard work, but I can breathe through one of the nostrils. Uh, and everything you read online says you're going to be totally shut down for like two weeks. That being said, I cannot neti pot to save my life. <laughs> I just basically I'm wa waterboarding myself like five times a day now. So I'm a forgiving guy. I'm never going to forgive the person who decided to fill in the, uh, the, this little box down here with just solid black on like every digital com. It is so, it just, it's, it draws the eye and it ruins, like, ah, it's such a bad decision. <laughs> uh, before I start, is this you graphic novel, rock and roll ninja graphic novel. And I've got to, uh, or I'm uh, compiling the backers list for the damaged and missing. This counts for books, posters, but also like this guy didn't get his dog tags. So um, making a list of that. Uh, I thought I had the dog tags, but I confused it with a different delivery. So it's still a couple more days for that, but... Uh, I got all the Gemini mailers and I'm ready to go once I get those. Thanks for sending that in. So um, technically, this could probably be a community post. Um, I always look at the, at the uh, you know the views. And while the first issue of this storyline when I was reviewing it got good views, the second one was just kind of like, man, it's like I don't need to do a review for every single issue. Now, originally five years ago, Somebody super chatted me to get the trade paperback and it became like a thing. <laughs> and I lost the book and then I found it. Um, and then I forgot it's like the book's like 300 pages because it throws in the original Genosha storyline. And, and I was like, I remember the storyline pretty well. But correct me if I'm wrong, but all of the good moments were in the Uncanny X-Men issue. The New Mutants were basically filler where people would just get captured and escape or there would be like, one fight, you know what I mean? And uh, the Bogdanov uh, art on X Factor did not age very well at all. But this has been fantastic. Now, I know one of the things to talk about a writer is to call him uh, a director, like from the movies, but this is more of a juggler. And the things that Chris Claremont can do is just amazing. But let's just stop for a very special shout out to Lucas Hamilton. <laughs> So they're doing this man on the street, woman on the street thing to kind of catch you up on the storyline. And this guy, I mean, this is 1989, I think, 1990. I mean, just the whole, that that's just... Now, here's the deal. I had only really seriously started reading Marvel Comics in 1988. So I was only, you know, two years into reading Marvel Comics. So when I see, you know, this, I'm like, oh, this guy's a superhero. He's probably one of the Avengers. No. Turns out he's just Lucas Hamilton. <laughs> he's, he's got his own page on, you know, the, the marvelfandom.com. Uh, Lucas Hamilton was interviewed by Manoli Wetherill about the X-Men trial at uh, Genosha. So for 30 years, I always assumed he was uh, either from, I mean, there's so many supporting characters that Chris, I'm not talking about superheroes. I'm just talking about regular just, you know, oh, this is the freaking... This is Amanda Sefton. This is this. I was like, he's got to be something. For thirty years, it's like he ain't nothing. He's something. No, he's just, he's just that. That's him. That is that's Lucas Hamilton right there. Uh, so um, I remember this uh, very well. I will say that there's a problem in that, and you see this in all of the, um, almost all of the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont is. This is also a terrible tangent right there. It looks like he's standing on her shoulder. Chris Claremont wants to, you know, do all of his storylines and and it's great. But he also likes to cram a lot in. And he doesn't give Jim Lee a chance to breathe and, and be his best self. So some of it works, but like the last few pages of this, you can tell it's just like, okay, just, we're wrapping things up. But I mean, stuff like this. This is a double page spread. And yes, it does kind of kill me that it wasn't perfectly... It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but I don't know. There's just something about this. Now, before the X-Men franchise was a dating app for lesbians, it was an adventure comic. It was an everything in the kitchen sink adventure comic. 
And this, you know, captured by the bad guys and put into a kangaroo court. It just art is so... Fr I remember being amazed at, like, this roof. <laughs> now I can look at this and say this is basically just like an hour of doodling and it's, it's pretty darn easy. The much more difficult thing is to get all of these characters standing next to each other in proportion. And, well, the stairs kind of save your ass, but sometimes not so much. But, um... Uh, it's just so much fun. He's he's juggling all these characters, some of which were quite new at the time. And he understands them. He gets them. There's just little minor things. Like, I'm looking at this, and that's like a muscular arm, but that's not a cable arm. You know what I mean? And he's got a cable right there. Uh, but um, got this, you know, great escapes. There was a lot of other storylines. Uh, the Psylocke being transformed. Wolverine uh, losing his powers. Uh, but you see, no, no, it's, I've had a lot of issues with comicsology. Now, anytime you get this thing where all the heroes are captured, it's just going to be the best. I mean, look at this panel. Look at the composition. There are so many things happening in this panel. This is an absolute masterpiece. Then, you know, since they ain't no punks, they're always trying something. Even when it seems like stuff is failing, they're actually succeeding in ways you don't realize so uh gambit and uh uh cable very new characters uh have a kind of rapport they're kind of like the badasses so they're very proactive which leads to an escape that you know that comes off of the uh failure of the original uh escape but i gotta say all of this stuff just works such a great team i know there was a, a mini series with them later right i i never read that one but this stuff is just awesome. So later what he does is he uses that spike to escape from jail. So there's a lot of uh, character work. Um, even this stuff, you know, uh, Cameron Hodge making them uh, fight each other. He's like, have you noticed? These two really and truly don't like each other. Hate at first sight, Warren told me. Once from the moment the little lowlife roughneck creep made his entrance by putting some major moves on Miss Jean Grey. Something else these stalwarts have in common. Unrequited love. How sweet. How sad. It's just, I mean, this is just such good writing. <laughs> and Chris Claremont, he could get very over the top. He could get very uh, Chris Claremont. <laughs> I got to say, it's, it's, I don't think anyone's proud about how when he was taken off X-Men, everyone's like, yeah, cool, fine. Okay, bye. Uh, there were things about his run that were annoying and were repetitive and were silly. But when he was hitting on all cylinders, it was just freaking uh, awesome. So then we get the, uh, you know, oh, okay, comicsology failing and a bunch of subplots uh, dovetailing quite nicely. He doesn't ever really lose track of anyone, or at least he gives the impression of not losing track of them. Sometimes, uh, hey, comicsology, what can I say? I mean, it's only... 2022 um but uh this right here this bit i loved where at one point there's a distraction and then cyclops is like okay gambit and gambit's like what he's like come on <laughs> come on you obviously took that spike on purpose so you could escape he's like yeah I, I did this part i don't know why when i read this it just blew my mind it was the coolest thing i ever saw it was so bad. I mean, so you see there, and he's been s sitting there with this uh, spike in his leg. Cyclops is like, all right, d do the thing. We all, come on, do the thing. <laughs> so he, uh, by the way, this is not easy to do. <laughs> this is, that's some real core right there. So he reaches up, he pulls it out with his teeth. He drops it. He catches it with his feet, and then he picks a lock with his feet, that is also kind of looks like <laughs> it kind of looks yeah, it looks like he's checking his ass out. But um, what a great heroic uh, escape! And then Cyclops, he's just in it to win it. He's you know again some of these people he just barely knows. Um, and he's like, all right, let's go and uh, great adventure. I will skip to the end. I didn't think I was going to be able to get a whole uh, video out of this. Um. I'll show you the, the last couple pages it's really squashed like this should be a lot larger panel it's a, a really great moment where um, uh, Warren basically can't control his wings 
and you know she could just get slaughtered but she knows these two men she trusts them so she jumps down into the uh, lion's den but you can see where everything starts getting a lot more squashed in there and even these last this last page there's this is cyclops getting his superpowers back and blasting cameron hodge very powerfully that should not have been just this teeny tiny little panel and then the recovery that that you needed at least two more pages to and then this is storm um regaining her powers and her i was gonna say height she's not a kid anymore um and then i forget how but somehow this she's able to give other people their powers back uh yeah so it lives up quite well uh <laughs> again these are just like someone is captured and then escapes there's one fight that doesn't you know impact the plot at all read new mutants uh 95 eh. this next one 273 i have read that thing to pieces it's one of the best and this will never stop bothering me why did you do this why why <laughs> see right there you left it in see how normal that looks that looks like a cover this looks like freaking abomination but uh it's been five years i really appreciate that person who sent me the super chat my old new york city apartment it's been a long time coming but i i believe i've discharged my debt lucas hamilton you, you made an impression let's just, you made an impression Nobody can say you weren't memorable. It's your freaking... <laughs> what, what? Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the character's name. It wasn't... It was the sequel to The Cosby Show. No, not The Trial. It, they were in college. It's not called different, A Different World. Freaking Different World. <laughs> freaking glasses. Um, but uh, before I go, is this you graphic novel? Rock and Roll Ninja graphic novel. Now I gotta go get some tax payments postmarked very dramatically on the last day before they're due and then i'm going to be uh packing up some stuff some of the if you if you got like knife hand blind spot uh some if you've gotten add-ons for some of the books that aren't ready yet i've got some of the add-ons on hand and i've got the gemini mailers so i'm just going to send the add-on just you know basically just clearing out the uh the, the warehouse over here but that's what i'm going to be doing uh, this weekend. Thanks for watching. Bye.